Roll out the red carpet and get out your acceptance speech because we have your backstage pass to Hollywood. Backstage pass starts now. In five, four, three, two. Are, are you, you ready? ready? and welcome back to Backstage Pass, where we give you the scoop on all things entertainment. I'm Hannah Belkowski. And I'm Eric Valenti. For this episode of Backstage Pass, we're talking everything Oscars. After all, it's one of the most important award shows in Hollywood. Let's not waste any more time and recap some winners, and we're also going to give our thoughts as well. Best Picture went to A24's Everything Everywhere All at Once. The Oscars tend to pick one film that takes a majority of the awards, and it tracks this year as the film won seven Oscars that night. For this particular award, I think it's well-deserved. I'm a big movie score lover, and this year the best score went to the German film, All Quiet on the Western Front. Music is used to evoke an emotion or feeling in an audience, and this score made me feel so uneasy, which is exactly what it was going for. It was beautifully composed by Volkel Bertelmann, and I think this Oscar was very well-deserved. I would also like to take this time to say I think this movie should have won Best Picture, just saying. Michelle Yao won the Oscar for Best Actress, making her the first Asian woman and only second woman of color to win the award. Michelle is one of the most talented women in the business, so she deserved this. Also, another feather in A24's cap. Best Actor went to Brendan Fraser for his role in The Whale. His speech was very moving and I think he deserved to win this one. It was a beautiful comeback moment for him after being in the industry for 30 years. Jamie Lee Curtis took home her first ever Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. She accredited her win to not only her parents but also to every movie she's ever worked on. This includes Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheinert, the, direct, the directors for Everything Everywhere All at Once, who actually won the Oscar for Best Director this year. The Daniel duo dominated. In Scheinert's acceptance speech, he thanked all his public school teachers who taught him as a kid. Shout out to the teachers. And Daniel Kwan thanked his creative partner. Once again, congrats to our Daniel duo. Best Supporting Actor went to Ki Hui Kwan for Everything Everywhere All at Once. This was the best moment of the night. He is only the second Asian winner in this category, and his speech was beyond beautiful. And I was crying on my couch listening to him. He told his story of being a refugee and how his mother gave up so much for him. And my heart just broke when he said, Mom, I just won an Oscar. Ugh, my heart. But it gets better. Harrison Ford was the presenter for Best Picture, and if you don't know, back in the day, Ford and Kwan were co-stars in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. When Kwan's movie Everything Everywhere All at Once won Best Picture, Ford and Kwan had a somewhat reunion. Kwan said he thought Ford wouldn't recognize him, but instead, when they saw each other, Ford pointed at him and said, quote, are you short round? And Kwan said, yes, Indy, which was followed by a sweet embrace. Every Oscars tends to have its awkward moments, and this year's award show gave us the interaction between Malala and Jimmy Kimmel. Our host for the 95th Oscars was trying to get some funny back and forth with the celebrity audience, and this being Kimmel's third time hosting, you expect him to get some funny responses. He asked the youngest Nobel Prize winner, do you think Harry Styles spat on Chris Pine? To which Mal Malala responded, I only talk about peace. Kimmel then said, and that's why you're Malala. It's one of those nervous laugh moments, and Kimmel did get some flack concerning the interaction. But nonetheless, it's memorable. The Oscars always celebrate those who have passed in the movie industry, and John Travolta was this year's speaker. In August, Travolta's Grease co-star Olivia Newton-John passed away. 
At the end of his speech, Travolta paid tribute to Newton-John saying, quote, they have touched our hearts, they have made us smile and became dear friends who, will always re who we will always remain hopelessly devoted to. If you're wondering, yes, I did cry at this part of the Oscars too. Everyone loves those friendship goal moments at the Oscars and I'm included in that group. This year, we got to see Emily Blunt and The Rock getting ready together and cracking jokes left and right. Even backstage, these two were goofing around. And when presenting the award for an animation at the beginning of the Oscars, the two had a hilarious back and forth. Of course, when Hannah and I go to the Oscars, in the future, we'll, be, we'll have you butt gusting from laughter. <laughs> but y'all know that I live for the drama, and this year, viewers took to social media to stir up something. They pointed out that they feel Angela Bassett was robbed for her Oscar for Supporting Actress for her performance in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Viewers noticed that when Jamie Lee Curtis was announced as the winner, Bassett was visually disappointed with the decisions. Fans are supporting Bassett for her honest reaction. Okay, the last moment that I wanted to talk about was the Philly pretzels that were available at the Oscars. Abington native Adam Shapiro brought some Philly-style soft pretzels from the Shappy Pretzels Company, which he operates in Los Angeles. Kimmel asked Shapiro to put a pretzel under every seat in the theater. And he did just that. Shapiro and his wife, Katie Lowe's, baked and brought 4,000 pretzels to the Oscars. As a Philly native myself, I'm giving mad props for this. I always love watching red carpet interviews and seeing what people are wearing. But this year, there was one interview that was very awkward. One of the red carpet hosts was Ashley Graham, and she interviewed Hugh Grant. Not gonna lie, he was very rude to her, and he hardly answered the questions, challenged what, was, what she was saying, and even left with an eye roll. Ugh, that's enough Oscars for now. You know who has guts and loves his puppy? John Wick. It's the best I could come up with. John Wick Chapter 4 is here, and we get to see Keanu Reeves play his famous role once again. In this film, hitman John Wick takes on the high table global in search of the most powerful players in the underworld? Traveling from New York to Paris to Japan to Berlin. Talk about a trip. The popular game Dungeons & Dragons is now a movie. This Friday, March 31st, Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieve, Thieves hits theaters. You know the gist. Adventurers heading on a quest to find a long-lost artifact or something. It's like an episode of Dora the Explorer, but different. And Chris Pine is in it, so keep that in mind. I will. In TV-related news, RuPaul's Drag Race Season 15 it is down to its final four. This is the first time I've ever given this reality competition show a chance, and I have not been disappointed. The queens this season have created some entertaining moments, gorgeous outfits, and have brought major shade. It's tough to say who's most deserving of the win, but a lot of fans believe that it's going to be Sasha Colby. But never underestimate an underdog, aka Anitra. If you hate good television, then might I suggest everyone's least favorite show, Velma, available on HBO Max. This is Mindy Kaling's meta version of the classic show, Scooby-Doo. This show has been destroyed by the internet and most TV reviewing websites have given it quite a low rating, including Rotten Tomatoes with an 11%. The negativity comes from the bad writing and awkward relationships. And no Scooby-Doo, I mean, come on. I have some popular Netflix show updates for you all. The hit show You has been renewed for a fifth season, details to come. Season three of Bridgerton is coming very soon and the release date is going to drop any day now. And Love is Blind season four is out now on Netflix. The season is set in Seattle, so be sure to watch it and see if love is truly blind. Do you wish you could be in a courtroom, but you're not on trial? You just get to see things unfold. Gwyneth Paltrow is here to help. The actress is in the courtroom pleading her case concerning a skiing accident. The case actually began seven years ago with Paltrow crashing into Terry Sanderson on the Deer Valley Resort. Sanderson filed his lawsuit in 2019 and claims that Paltrow crashed into him on the slopes causing lasting injuries and brain damage. He is seeking $300,000. The court proceedings have been gaining attention because of some interesting questions slash comments from the lawyers, like about Paltrow's height and her friendship with Taylor Swift. Live streams of the court proceedings are being uploaded on YouTube. Paltrow won't be the only one in the courtroom. Reese Witherspoon and Jim Toth are getting a divorce. Witherspoon announced the news on her Instagram a couple of days before her birthday and their anniversary. The pair is handling it really well and we wish the best for them both. 
Though Witherspoon's marriage may be coming to an end, there may be a new celeb relationship in our future. Shawn Mendes and Sabrina Carpenter have dating rumors spreading like wildfire. The two were spotted together and an Instagram account helped plant the dating seed in everyone's mind. They were also seen at Miley Cyrus' album release party and hiking together. Could this be the beginning of something? And should we expect a love song duet anytime soon? Or is it all nonsense? You know what is nonsense? The Selena Gomez and Hailey Bieber drama. This feud is like the modern version of Jacob versus Edward, which I'm team Jacob all the way, if you are wondering. Okay, let me back up. We all know that Justin Bieber dated Selena Gomez. We all shipped them, but that relationship was not all rainbows and butterflies. They dated from 2011 to 2012, broke up, got back together in 2015, had an on-again, off-again relationship until they broke up one final time in 2018 because no one deserves Selena Gomez. That same year, Justin Bieber got engaged to model Haley Baldwin, and they got married two months later. Okay, so fast forward to February 2023. Selena posted a TikTok about over laminating her eyebrows, and hours later, Haley posted a screenshot of herself and Kylie Jenner with close ups of their eyebrows. The internet saw this as a dig at Selena, and they went searching for more. Fans gathered moments of Haley Bieber being a quote, mean girl. And due to this, Selena's makeup brand Rare Beauty saw a major increase in sales, while both Kylie and Haley saw a decline in their brands and Instagram followers but it gets even more complex. Fans dug real deep into Hollywood's archives and found side-by-side -side comparisons of Haley quote-unquote copying Selena Gomez. There are so many examples online and there's no way it's all a coincidence. People are saying that Haley is envious of Selena and that she's trying to prove herself to Justin. There has also been speculation of the Bieber couple with videos surfacing that suggest Justin doesn't care about Haley. And as the drama continues to circle the internet, where do the two stand now? Well, Selena Gomez posted on her Instagram a message telling fans to be kind and defended Haley after she supposedly received death threats. The whole thing is getting out of hand, but if you ask me, Haley's behavior seems a bit sus. Regardless, the internet is no place for hate, so whoever side you're on, just be nice. Hannah is going off. In an additional Selena Gomez news, the singer and actress has also surpassed 400 million followers on Instagram. This means that she's the most followed woman on the app, beating out Kylie Jenner. Now, back to our Selena Gomez expert. Remember when I said no one deserves Selena Gomez? Well, apparently I was wrong. Recently, it was confirmed that Selena Gomez and Zayn Malik are dating. I am a major Selena fan, and I'm an old directioner, so I'm very happy with this couple. Two beautiful people in love. How Hollywood of them. And another new Hollywood couple is Emily Ratajkowski and Harry Styles. I know. How dare he cheat on his millions of fans. The One Direction boys are really catching that love bug. Mm-hmm. A few weeks ago, a Twitter user uh, did something, and I'm going to tell you about it. Uh, gave me a thank you note DM, yep, yep. Uh, a few weeks ago, a Twitter user pointed out the internet personality Emma Chamberlain was charging $10,000 for a personal thank you note. There was also a payment plan where the buyer would pay about 900 a month for a year. With the internet buzzing about this, the Chamberlain store ended up closing. A representative for Emma Chamberlain's company, Kozak Inc., stated that the accusations were false in and inaccurate. The company behind the website says that the content was made years ago for testing purposes and was never meant to be seen by the public or sold at all. This is done without Chamberlain's knowledge. Chamberlain stated that when she saw the initial post, she thought it was a scam. Miss Taylor Swift's era's tour is insane. Not only are fans going crazy, but some are taking it to the next level. Some are camping out in line at the concert to just be able to buy merch. It's like Disneyland, but you're waiting to buy a t-shirt. One fan even got married during the concert. I don't know whether to say congrats or to question our society. Touring is great and all, but nothing beats celeb baby news. Actress Lindsay Lohan is pregnant with her first child. The Mean Girl star posted a picture of a onesie with the caption, we are blessed and excited. Last July, Lohan and Batter Shamas got married and Lohan says she feels like the luckiest girl in the world. 
Congrats to this pair and we wish them the best in parenthood. More baby news. The next wizard generation is here. Harry Potter is having a, I, I mean, Daniel Radcliffe is having a baby. He and his girlfriend, Erin Dark, are very excited to welcome their first child and Radcliffe said, quote, we're really happy. What can we say? People love baby faces. I mean, look at Liam Payne. Fans are speculating that he might have gotten plastic surgery to look younger. When appearing at the red carpet for the premiere of Louis Tomlinson's new documentary, All of Those Voices, pictures of the former One Direction bandmate received quite a bit of ridicule. Looking at these new pictures, Payne's lips and cheek appear more chiseled. Payne has yet to respond to the accusations. It's a sweet life, especially for the sweet life of Zack and Cody star Dylan Sprouse. He and his now fiance Barbara Palvin are engaged. After five years together, the couple is getting ready to spend forever together. A crushing blow for everyone who wanted to marry, marry Dylan Sprouse. If you need something new to look forward to, Quentin Tarantino's final movie is set to start filming in the fall. The title of the film is The Film Critic and is set in the 70s. The project currently has no studio home, but some news sources are speculating Sony may be interested. Now, for those who want some Oscar-winning films to watch while they wait for, Quar for Tarantino's movie, LTV crew member Patrick O'Hara has picked out a few. You'll definitely want to check it out. Take it away, Patrick. Throughout the years, there have been so many fantastic movies that have been recognized with awards at the Oscars. And there's so many fantastic movies that I love and adore. Hello, everyone. My name is Patrick O'Hara. Today, we will be discussing and reminiscing on some past Oscar-winning movies that I personally enjoy or adore. So without further ado, let's head, let's head back in time to appreciate some great films. The Life of Pi, based on the book by Yann Marto, featured a young man who was stranded on a boat at sea with a lion, where the two are forced to survive and coincide with one another. The movie won four Oscars in 2000 and was nominated 11 times overall. The Life of Pi is a movie I remember seeing in theaters when I was younger. And although I hated the movie's length of three hours, I did enjoy the plot and the story the movie portrayed. Joker, starring Joaquin Phoenix, won a total of two Oscar awards and was nominated 11 times overall its year. The movie tells a more darker side to DC's anti-hero known as the Joker, and does so in an almost realistic way. I had seen Joker in theaters when it first released and overall enjoyed it a lot. I liked how relatable the writers tried to make his character while also showing the many layers of crazy he has built within him. It's a truly chaotic film that I recommend checking out if you haven't already. Get Out, directed by Jordan Peele, is another amazing movie that won an Oscar for Best Original Screenplay and was also Oscar nominated four times overall. Get Out tells the sinister story of an interracial marriage toyed with by the hands of the bride's racist parents. The bride's husband is forced to uncover the deadly truth that lies behind his wife's past and decipher whether she truly loves him or not. Horror movies are always my favorite, especially psychological ones, okay? I'm a total horror movie enthusiast. So, I must say that this movie takes the cake as one of my absolute favorite horror movies ever, with so many layers to unravel with each watch. And must I add that Jordan Peele is just as a great director? Lastly, Call Me By Your Name, starring Timothy Chalamet, is another movie that won the Oscar for Best Adapted Screenplay and was also nominated for a total of four Oscars overall. The movie was based on the beloved novel by Andre Asiman. The adaptation tells the story of a boy who becomes infatuated by his family's summer guest. The two become entranced in a whims whimsical summer romance that the two are forced to navigate despite what they believe is right and wrong. I watched this movie long after it released, in 2020 no less, and grew to love it. Romance stories usually tend to be my favorite and this movie definitely lived up to the expectation that I had of it. It was also filmed quite nicely, which I also adored. The Oscars have quite the honorable batch of great award-winning movies and it's a shame they all don't get recognized for their brilliance. Today, we got to appreciate four Oscar award-winning films that I find to be my personal favorites. If you haven't heard of those four amazing films already, I suggest you go check them out. Now, let's go head back to the studio with Hannah and Eric for more Oscars fun. Some pretty great films, Patrick. It's so hard to choose the best Oscar award-winning films. There's just too many. But oftentimes, we just think about the visuals of a movie and not as much as what's going on on the audio track. So let's check out some of our favorite Best Original Song Academy Award winners. All of my song choices are going to be love songs, by the way. My first Oscar winning song is from the original Top Gun film Berlin's Take My Breath Away from 1986. In my opinion, this song is the most dazzling ballad ever written. 
The singer's gentle voice conveys love perfectly, and I have this delusion that I'll hear the song when I've met the one. My first choice is Glory from the 2014 film Selma. This song was written by John Legend and rappers Common and Rhymefest. This powerful anthem is a mix of soul and rap, but it also captures all the emotions of the film Selma and the historical civil rights movement. The song had a lot of meaning to it, and it was very deserving of this Oscar. My song number two is Celine Dion's My Heart Will Go On from the 1997 film Titanic. This one is a tearjerker. It's like famously known to make people cry. Celine Dion is one of the greatest singers of all time because she has such a powerful voice. When you hear this song, you instantly think of Jack and Rose and their heart-wrenching story. And then you start thinking about if a door in the ocean could support the weight of two people. Lastly, I'm choosing The Streets of Philadelphia by Bruce Springsteen. This song was featured in the 1993 film Philadelphia starring Tom Hanks. In such a powerful film, there needed to be a song that could express the emotion both the characters and the audience felt in the story. And Bruce definitely delivered with this song. It's one of the few songs that makes me weep. Oh, you can trust our choices. After all, Hannah and I make killer playlists all the time. However, something we have trouble with is figuring out what to wear. It can take a bit of time for us. I mean, our Oscar outfit coordination for this episode took forever. Luckily for us, LTV crew member Caitlin Ramos has compiled a list of her favorite Oscar looks. Offer us some fashion inspiration, Caitlin. Hey, have you watched the recent Oscars awards show? Well, I have. I'm Caitlin Ramos, and today I'll be going over some of my favorite Oscars outfits over the years. First, let's go back to 2022 when Zendaya wore Valentino Couture now we all know Zendaya is a style icon and anything she wears will look good. At the 2022 Oscars, Zendaya had on a silk white cropped button up with a silver sequin skirt. Simple yet elegant at the same time. During the 1986 Oscars, Cher would wear an iconic outfit that would become to known as the revenge dress made by Bob Mackey. She wore a stunning black two-piece that showed off her stomach and a huge feathered headdress. Allegedly, she wore this despite the Oscars for snubbing her on a previous film she had worked on. In 2002, Halle Berry wore a beautiful dress with floral print covering her stomach, and the skirt of the dress was a deep, smooth red. The dress was made by Ellie Saab. This was also the year that Halle Berry would take home an Oscar for Best Actress, becoming the first black woman to do so. Coming back for another round is Zendaya. Are we surprised? No. During the 2021 Oscars, Zendaya wore a bright yellow Valentino dress. The long dress that reached the floor was stunning. Zendaya was literally glowing. Amanda Seyfried wore a red slightly puffed out at the bottom dress to the 2021 Oscars. The red lip also ties the look in together. The dress was made by Giorgio Armani, and he certainly knows how to dress people because she looked amazing. The last on my list would have to be Natalie Portman at the 2020 Oscars. She wore a black dress with gold detailing, but what really caught people's attention was the cape she wore that listed all the female directors who had been snubbed. Those were just a few of the Oscar looks I've enjoyed over the years, and I cannot wait to see more amazing fashion in the future. Now, back to Hannah and Eric in the studio. Beautiful choices, Caitlin. Amanda Seyfried's red dress will forever be my favorite Oscars look. Something we don't usually talk about on the show is fine art. We prefer celeb drama here. But a video is trending right now of a painting that was revealed behind another painting in a church. In Naples at the end of 2022, during a restoration of the Church of St. George Maggiore, a mural that dates back to the 16th century was discovered depicting the story of St. George and the dragon. I guess we should check other paintings to make sure other masterpieces aren't hiding underneath. May the odds be ever in your favor. Do you know where that's from? Ring any bells? Yes, The Hunger Games, a franchise that we were all obsessed with circa 2012. Ten years later, there is what is being called a Hunger Games renaissance. TikTokers are posting their cringy videos where they pretended to be Katniss Everdeen. People are posting their middle school Katniss braids, and people are singing that tree song. It has gone full madness on the internet, and I'm not mad about it. Hashtag PETA for life. Speaking of getting nostalgic, if you remember a few episodes earlier, I talked about my hype for the remake of Resident Evil 4. Guess what? It's here, y'all. I've been watching some gameplay of this remake, and I think it looks great. You play as Leon Kennedy as he tries to save a girl named Ashley from a village that's been affected by a mind and body altering virus. The game appears to run smooth with seamless gameplay and graphics. Some characters got major redesigns to make them look a bit more detailed, 
For some of them, they look scarier compared to the original game. This game also does a great job of balancing action and horror. I mean, RE4 is a, fan fav is a favorite from the franchise, so the stakes were pretty high for the remake, but so far it's getting high reviews. I'm glad players are enjoying this one, and I su suggest picking up a copy ASAP. I don't know why I'm such a big Mario Kart girl, because I am absolute rubbish at it. But here I am still so excited for the fourth wave of the DLC. Eight new courses have been added earlier this month, making up two cups called the Fruit Cup and the Boomerang Cup as part of the wave four of the DLC. The tracks I'm most excited to race on are Yoshi's Island and Tour Singapore Speedway. But wait, there's more. A new character is being added to the DLC, Birdo, whoever that is. I think it's time for our favorite part of the show, our new obsessions. My obsession is a song recommendation, Deserve You by Ruffin. It's a terrific song to fit a chill vibe. The beats are chef's kiss. The singer's voice is angelic to say the least. If you need a song to add to your commuting playlist or for when you're relaxing in your room, Deserve You will have you smiling and nodding along. Grab your headphones and give it a listen. If you thought I couldn't talk about Selena Gomez more, you're wrong. I'm obsessed with the show Only Murders in the Building, starring Selena Gomez, Martin Short, and Steve Martin. I love all these actors so much, and they are just so funny together. And one of my favorite movies is Father of the Bride, and the duo of George Banks and Frank cracks me up. Anyways, I always love seeing Steve Martin and Martin Short together, and with the addition of Selena, this show has my heart. I'm patiently waiting for season three. I can't believe it's the end of our show. I wonder what our viewers thought about our stories, thoughts, and opinions about all the content we covered. I wish there was a place they could connect with us. Luckily, you can, through social media. Get your phone out and follow us on these various platforms seen on your screen. Drop us a follow, leave a comment, and let us know if you have any suggestions. Time to catch up on all the Oscar award-winning movies. I'm Hannah Balkowski. And I'm Eric Valenti. We'll see you next time on Backstage Pass.